Hi everyone, Bandana here and welcome back to Warno. Today we're going to have a bit of a tutorial video, a bit of a guide video. So, I was going to cast one of the rookie tournament sets of matches from the August monthly tournament from SD League. And I did cast it, I had some sound issues so I was going to recast it, and then I undenard with myself. So, my eternal dilemma when casting the rookie tournament is, do I try and help the people playing by you know, suggesting how they could improve their play as we go. And obviously that's to the benefit of the viewers as well, who might not know how to position troops very well either. Or do I just hold off, because I really don't want to cause anyone any offence. And obviously people have different levels when they get offended or not. So I'm umdenard a bit, and then I decided, well actually, rather than do the cast, and put anyone on the spot, so to speak, let's actually have a look at deployment. So, deployment in 1v1s or team games is similar in many ways. You're going to want a particular set of units up front, on the front lines. The only variation comes on what type of terrain you're on. So, I think Vertigo's a nice map. It's got a bit of everything. You've got some forests dotted around. You've got a nice town in the middle here or industrial area, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got sort of more open terrain at this side in the, this point. And it's also a nice map because it's very central. Yeah, you've got a very central sort of route that you're going to attack through. Two points here and there's your front line. That road that runs down the map is basically the front line. It's very obvious what the aim is here. The aim is to try and contest these two points, or contest one very heavily and push through to the back point. Now, when it comes to, to pushing through the back points, my opinion is this side is easier. The gaps are shorter, and there's less ways to defend them. So if you come from this side to Dimitri, and then you push through here, you can go through the forest, and you're basically in center anyway. Yeah? Much easier to push through that way. And then if you're on the other side of the map, let me spin around, and you're coming through to Dimitri, getting into Fedor, there's not a lot of buildings there to put units in to defend. It's pretty open. Unless you fill this with long-range units, which probably many people won't do, you know, the reinforcement route would be a bit of a pain to do that to some extent, you can pretty much push into Fedor, because you can even come around the back then at that point. If they've got a lot of ATGMs in there, you come around this way and avoid them. So... That, to me, is a nicer way to get through. The other side of the map with Anna, the open areas are big. So here you've got a lovely defensive wall. Look at all those trees. If you are defending Boris, you fill that with tanks, you fill it with ATGMs. It's very hard to assault from Anna that way. It's doable, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot more of a challenge. And then if we spin round, again, you've got this situation where there's a nice tree line there, there's nice tree lines here, and there's nice tree lines there. So you've got a lot of open ground to cover to get into that point. Perhaps you could come around this way, go through these trees and be a bit closer, but, you know, it's easier to defend down here, in my opinion. That's why you tend to see big fights over Anna, and then people don't often push on. Whereas if someone takes Dimitri, quite often they'll push through the centre or Fedor. But a little bit of an explanation of this map. Going around the back is also possible. You can cap the back points. They are worth three points each. So if you can get a chop around the back with some uh, command infantry or something, sneaky, sneaky like, that can also be beneficial. So that is why you'll often see people have some recon out here, or some recon down here or over here, just to watch out for those choppers. Obviously, any unit you send to do that is an expense. And that's a unit not on the front line. So whether you're using that to take a point or to defend a point with some recon. It's all the cost that adds up. And you've got 1500 at the start in a standard game. So, where do we start? Well, I'm gonna start with recon. That's why I've got the tab open. Now I'm playing as the 35th, so I have plenty of forward deployment troops and everything else. I love the 35th and I know the units pretty well. So I've chosen to go with them for this. Now, obviously this is sort of primarily aimed at 1v1 on this map. But, you, you know, it can apply to a team game, it can apply to a 10v10, it doesn't really matter. You're going to do similar sort of things at the start. So the first thing is, what map are you on? Where are the points that you need to take? So at this side of the map where we're spawning, 
I definitely need to take Elena and Fedor. No debate about that, okay? Then I need to take, preferably, Anna and Dimitri, or I need to be contesting them both. The other option is I take my forces to one and forgo the other. But obviously that means if I fail to take the one that I'm pushing all my forces into, then, you know, that's bad. What you tend to find on this map is people send most of their forces to Anna on both sides, and then a small force to Dimitri to hold. But you also see from time to time someone send all of their units to Dimitri and try and push through early on. But obviously if you do that and take the point, the onus is really on you then to push through, be aggressive, take the back point as well. The person's probably not ready for it. So it's about learning when to be aggressive and when not to be as well. And that's something that I can't really teach you in a tutorial. That is something that just comes with experience and learning who you're playing against and how they're behaving in the game. It's not going to work every time for me to say, aha, well, you took Dimitri easily, now you can push Fedor really easily. It, it really doesn't work like that. You've got to sort of judge it and learn to judge it. But let's have a look what we would put down here. So, starting with Recon, and I will put a chapter in so you can just jump to the deployment point that we're going to go for. We're going to start with Recon. Recon are really important. They should be at the front of your forces within reason. They should always be at the front of your defensive lines, and preferably, they should be just behind your assaulting forces so that when you form a new defensive line, they're giving you eyes on what could be coming in. So... On this map, there are plenty of places to put recon. There are some really good buildings to put recon. There's lots dotted over here on both sides. You've got some buildings here. You've got forest or little tree lines there. You've got a building back here, which I tend to ignore, to be honest, same as these ones. So the first thing to say is we need recon across the middle. They shouldn't be back here. They shouldn't be back there. They need to be across the middle. The only time they should be further back is maybe if you're putting recon at either of these side points to check for choppers or indeed something up here but that's the middle of the map to me that's the front line still so it's more that applies to here so i have some spetsnaz grew they have the ground surveillance radar which gives them exceptional recon they are very expensive they are not a cheap set of units but they are very good so they're going to go right in the front they are forward deployable so it means i'm getting out there pretty early Standard recon is a bit further back, so there we go. If I put the chopper down, you'll see I'm a bit further back there. But that's okay. You might not have any forward deployment troops in your deck. So you, most of your forces will be standing back here. But that doesn't matter. It's, it's not as important on every map. Obviously, getting units in here early is beneficial. But, you know, as long as you get into the point, it's fine. And I'll discuss that when we start moving units in there. So I've got my Spetsnaz Grew. They're just coming in a standard gas. Nothing special about that. Now, I like to use unload at position. Default key for that is Y on a British keyboard. I believe on the German keyboard that would be Z, because that's up at the top there next to T. And I'm going to send them along there and just deploy them. And they will, they will find their way along this road and go up there and deploy in that building. What I will actually do is then move them out of that building, once they're in there, to the edge of the forest. And they'll give me a good line of sight across this area. You could also put them in this building back here. But, so there's some risks to doing this. And the reason I don't do it is they're an expensive unit. And I want them to be as defended as possible. So in a forest, they're not an easy target because I can move them about rapidly. So if I see something coming for them or they start to take damage, I can run back. If they're in a building, they have that time to dislodge from the building. And, you know, if a bomber's coming in, that's it, they're dead. So I'm, I tend to be quite careful where I can be with the Spetsnaz group. I'm a little bit more standoffish with them because of the benefit you get from the ground surveillance radar. Now, I'd also like to bring in some Razvedka up here. Again, recon. Now, these guys, I want to deploy somewhere at this side of the point. So we've got something sort of covering there. And if I just do that, you can see, you can see over to that side. We kind of want something either in this building or maybe in that forest there. And that shows us around the back, do you see? We can see, sort of see around the back of that then. That wouldn't allow that. So I'd actually like to deploy them up here. There's a nice road around here. So what I'm actually going to do is deploy them in here. So again, 
unload a position, and then I'm going to move that vehicle, because the vehicle they come in, the UAZ, is also a recon vehicle. And I'm going to turn its weapon off, and I'm going to tell it to come and sit back here. And that will then give me line of sight over this area. And that will let me see if any choppers try to go around the back. So that's why I'm doing that. So I've got two recon units for the price of one there. And that's just going to cover for any choppers. Keep an eye on it. Because, you know, they, someone might try and kill that if they realise it's there. Okay. Couple of units down. Spent a few points. Let's have a look at this side of the map. So once again, I'm going to bring in my Razvedka. Part of me would like to bring in a Gru for this area, but I think Razvedka, as we discussed, a little bit cheaper. I'm going to deploy them into this building. This is a really good building at this side uh, for recon. It's a really good building for ATGMs. Obviously, they can shoot across here. I'm going to get my recon in there, and then I'm going to tell the little vehicle they come in to go over that. So now I've got a little bit of recon in there and some further forward. Okay. I'm going to put down another Razvedka. Yeah, I'm going heavy on the recon here because I want to see what's going on. You could probably forgo this last one. You don't necessarily need to bring this in, but he's going to come and deploy preferably into that building. And then I'm just going to have the little truck come and park over there. And again, the truck is just going to be looking out over that area. And I'm going to turn its gun off just because I don't want it to shoot at anything. I just want it to be eyes on. So there we go. I'm deploying those there and I might move them up, but for now, they're just going to sit in that building. I don't want to worry about them. Okay, there's my recon. Recon choppers in a 1v1 can be beneficial. Maybe not as beneficial on this map because everything's quite close together. So they're easily targetable by anti-air. But you will see people use them. Especially at the sides of the map. But again, they're susceptible to aircraft coming in and shooting them down at the sides because you won't have anti-air there. And in the middle, they're going to be up against the enemy anti-air. Can be very beneficial though. They do usually have good recon. Okay, recon done. We've got a good spread there. We can see the commands going there, 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 and there. So we should have coverage of most of the map from our side. Now we need to think about our assault force. So we're going to switch to infantry. Because that's the next most important thing. Recon, infantry, anti-air. Anti-air I put after infantry because... Anti-air is helpful, especially if you are forward deployment, depending on what the enemy brings in. However, not everyone is going to bring in lots of aircraft at the start. They're expensive. So it's a calculated risk. If you buy those and the enemy's got lots of anti-air and they all get shot down, you're at a big disadvantage at the start. But let's have a look. So I'm not going to bring in a commander from this set. We'll bring in a vehicle commander. We've got the Sapri RPO, very good units. We probably want some of those to be going to Anna. We've got our SPG-9s. Any recallless rifles are very good. Don't underestimate them. They can hit infantry. They can hit vehicles. They're useful in lots of situations. And again, they'll be useful in Anna. We've got our Spetsnaz, which are expensive, but obviously very good units. They are elite forces. We've got our standard designated troops in the BMD-1. We've got our Metis launches, a little bit longer range. Very good at the moment, obviously. Spetsnaz OP, closer range, anti-vehicle. And then we've got our Conkers. The first thing I'm going to do is position Conkers. Because they're expensive units and it's nice to get them down and know that they're in a position you want them in. So you either position them up here or up here. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to put them down here. I'm going to select them. And I want them in that building there. Or that building there. Take your pick. I'm going to go for that one. On the basis that if they do come under fire and I have to panic move them, I can move them into the back building. And hopefully they're okay. But this is a calculated risk. It's a good position for them. If you look at that, they'll have a good line of sight there, especially with some recon over here and some recon down here. But, you know, they're in a building. They're susceptible. But we'll do that. Then I would like some anti-tank over here. And I'm going to go for that building again. I'm going to have recon and anti-tank in that building. Now, what I will say is that's risky because if a bomber comes in, it will kill both. Artillery comes in, it will kill both. So you take a calculated risk doing this. But my intention is that they won't be there for long. I want to move them up with my other forces. They're going to go in, deploy, and if I manage to secure this, they're going to move up to here. 
and the recon's potentially going to move up to this forest or tree line area here. Okay. Conquer's down. I'm just putting two down. We don't need a lot. We just want to threaten any vehicles. Next up, I want some meta squads. They're our sort of medium to long range, okay? And again, I'm looking to put some in here. They're a decent squad. They're a good size. Where are they gone? Seven men. Pretty decent sized squad. And once again, we're going to unload a position with the Y key. And I just want to drop them in this forest. And then we'll move them to the edge when we get there. I'd possibly consider taking two squads there. But I'm going to go back there once I've spent some money on Alpha. So, Alpha or Anna, I want flame troops. No messing about. I want RPO launches in there. And we can forward deploy. Now, you have one or two choices here. You either go in the top way or you try and go in the back way. I'm going to go in the top way because we've got forward deployment, so I think we'll get there early enough. If you're starting all the way back here, you make a choice. You either risk going through the top and hope that no one's in here already, or you direct your troops to go around the back. Please be very careful on this map. If I turn this around, there's this road here. A lot of people call in units from the back of the map and tell them to go into this forest. They will come along here by default and down this road, allowing any enemy units in there to fire at them. You've got to keep an eye on where that call in road is. You want to be coming down the back here or even better all the way around the back. But obviously that's a very long route to take. So just something to bear in mind. You can possibly use that road as well, but you're kind of susceptible in this area. Just some, just bear it in mind when you deploy those. Sometimes you forget. I forget. But just keep it in mind. Watch where your units are going to drive. Right. Sapri RPO. Two squads of. Potentially three. They're pretty cheap. They're good squads. Three squads of those. And I want them to get in here. And preferably deploy in there. I just want to go straight down this road. No messing about. I want to get a couple of meta squads in as well. And I want a Spetsnaz OP. Again, a reasonably cheap unit. And all of these guys, I would also like to get in there if I can. Now, the risk here is if anyone comes in with choppers, you're going to have issues. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'd also like at least one or two of the SPG-9s because they're so good. Now, as you can see already, we are really going heavily into Anna. Not sending a lot to Dimitri. We're really going in heavily on Anna. Okay. We've got a good mix of infantry there. We've got Spetsnaz OP. We've got SPG-9s. We've got Metis launchers. And we've got RPO. So we've got anti-infantry, we've got anti-vehicle, and we've got anti-infantry and anti-vehicle with the SPG-9s. Good amount of units, yeah? So what is left? We need to start worrying about anti-air. So, again, the beauty of this deck is you have forward deployment AA. And Iglers, very handy in this area, because they'll get up there fast in a UAZ with your other units. So I would consider taking standard Iglers in a UAZ. The Scrizette, on the other hand, I would bring in over here. The Scrizette is a little bit slower, but unless someone's really aggressive in Dimitri, you should be able to set up a defensive line with them. So I'm going to grab the Scrizette. I'm going to put it at the back here because it is going to be pretty slow. And again, we're just going to deploy it. Probably in that building for now with the recon. And then move the Scrizette up this way. And then down here, we're going to grab a couple of Eaglers. I'm going to split them up very slightly. So I'm going to put three down. In fact, no, I'm going to put two down. Because I'm looking at my points and I'm thinking, I kind of want to bring in more than one command. Okay? So, we're going to grab him. And he's going to deploy in this back building. And then the other one is going to try and deploy in here with everything else. Now, when those units deploy, you want to be watching them. Your focus is going to need to be on this point because you're sending lots of units in together. So, a good bomber, a good chopper... 
you know anything like that is going to annihilate these forces you need to be ready to deploy them early so you're babysitting these hopefully the stuff at this side is going to go in and just set up and you're not going to worry about it if they hit that point really hard anna's yours so they may have Dimitri, but you've got Anna, and then you need to start reinforcing Fedor rapidly. And if you have enough forces here that could be mobile, you could even try and push for Boris. So just something to bear in mind. Okay. Now we need our command vehicles. We're going to put down two of these guys. They are forward deployable as well. So they can be at the back, though. They don't have to be at the front. We're going to get them into here first. And the same at the other side. They're reasonably cheap. I'm going to move into here. And then we'll move them up afterwards once we see what's going on. Okay, I've got five points left. That is a good spend. The next thing I need to do is bring in some supply. That's the one thing I don't have in this deployment right now. But I needed, I felt, to spend what I've spent. The only thing I'd possibly get rid of is that recon for this side. I don't think it's super important right now. So I could get rid of that and bring in some supply. And the supply is mainly for 80 GMs and the RPO launchers. RPO launchers fire very quickly. You will run out of ammo in them very quickly. So that's what we do. I don't have an enemy in this game, so I'm just going to launch battle and let you watch these deploy. And I'll explain as we go what happens next. So... We're keeping an eye on these units. This is where we're babysitting. These units, I'm hoping, will just deploy without an issue. So what we can actually do is I'll turn around a little bit. So we're sort of focusing down here, but we can still see what's happening up there. There we go. Our commander's taken that. That's great. Maybe we move him up here. Now, you see what happened there? He's going around the top. Now, we don't want that to happen. So we move him fast. Move him fast to there. Give a new command, sorry. Move fast to there, and then move fast into there. So he's going to come around that way instead. Just watch your commands and where the vehicles are going. Because if there was a chopper there, it's going to target that down if it sees it. A smart opponent will go for your command. He's quite happy there. We'll move him up. We'll still keep an eye on these, though, so we can just leave him there for now. Okay, everything's arrived here. Now... If you see enemies, you just need to hit you on your keyboard. Deploy immediately, get them out, and preferably spread these out. Get the RPOs moving, get the Metis launchers moving. Get one Metis over this way, get another RPO over this way into this building. Preferably, you want to get into the nearest buildings possible, so that would probably be these ones. Long range units, preferably at the front. Metis get all the way up there. Igla can get in these buildings or just to the edge of the forest. And Spetsnaz OP can probably move around that way to get any vehicles that might be in here. So, concentrate on micromanaging these units. Move up the Iglers. Move up these guys, your SPG-9s, into these buildings so they can cover that forest. We've got deployment there. We've got that recon heading back that way. Our command is at the back there. Now we can move it in if we feel it's secure. Up at the top. Okay, our forces have deployed. What do we need to do? We need to move that Razvedka down here and it's not a bad position he can see over there we've got the conkers that can see across there these spetsnaz grew have a reasonable line of sight but let's move them right to the edge of that forest the metas are going to move to the edge of that forest the scrizette can probably stay where it is and we'll just use that when we need it and that command can now move up something to mention on this map is if i select that and just turn off that see here You've got this line of trees, and then if you look at where this line is, only the bottom of these trees is actually in the point. If you go into the top, it's outside the point and won't cap it, but if you go in down here, you will cap it. Bear in mind, it's a really obvious place for someone to artillery. So, we've got a good spread of units across the map. We are most certainly going to be losing units here. The engagement is going to be happening. So we would need to be reinforcing that there. Over here. Well. 
potentially we'd be having a bit of a skirmish unless they've hit it very hard. If they've hit it very hard, we have complete control of this point, and then we need to move out. So let's say that happened. Okay, this side is getting really badly hit, but this side, there were two or three units and we've killed them all. Great, we need to move up. So the first thing we're going to do is move up our recon and our conquers. They need to be up at the front here. Our metas can be moved all the way up into this tree line. The SPGs can be moved up as well. We probably want to think about bringing in another conquers unit over this side. Our RPOs, we could probably move one into this forest in case they try and get anything in around the top. Do we think there's anything around here? Well, we could be moving up our recon and get into these buildings instead. We could probably move that over there if we're feeling it's possibly in danger from stuff up here anyway. And then you also want to think about defending this point. So if you've lost everything here, you want to be bringing in 80 GMs. You want to potentially bring in a tank. Tanks are expensive though. So we're going to bring in a Conkers to sit in that building. Bear in mind it's going to get targeted down very quickly. We're going to bring in an SPG-9 because again they're very useful. And we probably want some more recon over here. So we can even bring in an MI-2 and that can hover at the back and just give us sort of coverage over this area. Because it's the cheapest one we have. It's the only one I could afford there. But we're in control. We're getting points. We will win the game eventually. It's currently plus eight. But there you go. Initial deployment and a little bit of movement to secure a point. When you're securing a point, make sure you re you've got recon at the front. You want your recon to be able to see what the enemy is then going to send in at you. Obviously, the Sapri here aren't necessarily great until the enemy try and push in infantry. But they've helped you clear the town to start with is the intention. Eaglers can be moved up into the front buildings. And into the front of this point. And you probably also want to be thinking about bringing in other anti-air at this point as well. So you want to be thinking about bringing in some Strellas. Afghanskis aren't bad. I'm a big fan of the Strellas myself. Now the truth is, the initial deployment is the initial deployment. After that, it depends what's happened on the map. So you will bring stuff in in response to what the enemy is doing. If you're having a rough time in the city because of other infantry, you're going to bring in infantry to counter that. If you're having a rough time because of choppers, you're going to bring in more anti-air with your first income. If you're having a rough time with vehicles, maybe you got the air tab and you bring in an SU-25 AT. There are lots of options. You've got to base it on what the enemy is doing. And there's no easy answer to that. It's going to very much depend game to game what happens. But I hope this was helpful in deploying units, making sure your recon is up front, making sure you have some long range stuff as well as short range stuff, making sure you have a mix of infantry, something that can do anti-vehicle, something that's anti-infantry. Because if you just go one or the other, they're going to get slaughtered by something. Combined arms is key, especially right now in the game. Combined arms is really key. Right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I will go and edit this down now and see where we get to. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe. I'll see you all soon for some more Warner.